Hi, I'm Dr. Marcus Masson from the Reconstructive Orthopedic Center in Houston. And today we're going to talk about a topic very important to the workplace, and that's safety. And our topic is safety, a systems approach. Now, our goal with this lecture is to talk about why injuries occur, what are basic definitions that apply to safety holistically, what is leadership, what is process simplification, how to identify risk factors, safety inspection checklist, and management synchronization. Now, the basic definitions I'd like to cover is what is a positive sum game, what is culture, what is quality work, what is safety, and how do you create priorities and decisions. Now, why injuries occur has to have three parts. First, is, it, is there an unsafe environment? Second, the employer reasons, which is lack of leadership management. Training is not provided for the employee. Safety equipment and protective uh, devices are not provided. And no execution checklists are available before you start a job, daily, weekly, or even on a monthly basis. Employee reasons are the lack of proven competence when you hire an employee the lack of skills practiced by the employee. There could be a lack of communication from uh, peer employees or from uh, the boss to the employee. There may be a lack of focus and distraction and certainly a lack of discipline can also be a problem. Now, the concept of some game is where players in an economic game either choose to cooperate or compete with each other in order to win. Now, positive sum game is a win-win scenario where the employee and employer work together to provide safety for the organization. Cooperation is the key, and then productivity, along with safety, is given in the workplace. A zero-sum game is when there's a winner and a loser, and that can only be fair in a competitive sport. But in business, cooperation is always the best. And a negative sum game is when people cooperate because the outcome of lack of cooperation is devastation. Now, culture is the beliefs and values that, and expectations and practices that guide a group for behavior and the results of a group are the, are the fact that uh, they work together. Now, behavior and performance are divided in what we call the eight R's. And it starts with respect, relationships, and rules and regulations that must be compliancy by all involved. And performance is based on the individual roles of the uh, employee or the manager or a safety supervisor and the responsibilities that each of those roles carry. What are the results that each of those roles expect? And what are the rewards we get from safety, which is essentially a lack of injury? Now. The safety concept is trying to avoid what we call the unknowable unknowns. And an unknowable unknowns is something that occurs without, a, without it being expected. And this can actually cause a horrible accident that you are not prepared for. And so the most important thing for control of the unknowable unknowns is prevention. And prevention requires preparation. And preparation requires awareness and practice by all involved. So a positive event, if a positive event occurs, which we call good luck, then what happens is if you're not prepared, it's an indeterminate win. You can lose that opportunity. However, if you're prepared, a major win will occur. On the other hand, if you have a negative unknowable unknown where a catastrophic event occurs and you're not prepared, a major loss can occur. And finally, if you are prepared, the loss will be minor. Now, when you're looking at quality work, creating value and optimizing every resource in the organization requires awareness, measurement, and employee execution that is both accurate, precise, involves discipline, and compliance. But measurement is what the power foundation is, and it actually gives you control of your environment and of what you're doing. It gives you proof of concept, because if you can't measure it, Lord Calvin says you can't prove it. 
And finally, management synchronization can only occur by measuring particular uh, events or particular activities that we want to achieve, and measurement allows you to make changes if necessary. Now, the other things that you must learn is how to prioritize and how to make decisions. So prioritization of what should be first should always be safety, but all priorities should be ranked, and that means putting them in order, and then the valence or the importance of the ranking between one and two and two and three is very important. That's called valence. And then the timeline of decision making for safe execution must be designated so that you're not in a hurry and can create in a high risk scenario an accident. Finally, decisions that require risk benefit analysis must be done understanding the short term outcomes the long-term outcomes, and the opportunity cost that is, uh, that is missed if you choose one event over the other. Now, leadership, Peter Drucker states, is that you, the leaders do the right thing. However, managers do things right. They understand what to do, and they do it. But both leaders and managers must learn, and they must lead by example. Some great quotes of Vince Lombardi is on accuracy, precision, perfection, and resilience. Let's start with what accuracy is. Accuracy for him, when he talked to his teams, he stated, practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. What he meant by that is make sure that you know what the target is first, and then practice as much as you can to hit that target. Which brings me to the next point, which is precision. On precision, Vince Lombardi stated, don't practice till you get it right, practice till you can't get it wrong. Essentially telling you that precision can only come with practice and practice and then more practice. Then he talked about perfection and he told his team in 1958 where they, when they were in last place, he said, gentlemen, we will chase perfection knowing we will never reach it, but in the process we will become excellent. A great quote in order to understand that even if perfection is unachievable, the goal is to try, strive for it because in that way, you'll become excellent. And finally, resilience and his talk about resilience is that the difference between someone who succeeds and someone who does not is not the smarter or the stronger, but it's the person that has the biggest will or, or desire to win, which is resilience. Never give up. That's the concept of resilience. And finally, vision requires the definition of what the goals are, what the objectives are, and objectives require who's going to do what and by when they're going to do it. That's very important, the three elements of objectives. And finally, results. Know your key performance index that you will be measuring. Don't measure for measurement's sake. Measure because it's a meaningful measure that can guide your decisions. In reference to processes, Processes are steps that you do in order to achieve something. It can require a skill or it can require knowledge, decisions, but essentially a process to be simplified, you must understand Porter's what we call value chain map. And a value chain is putting all the steps in a process that results from beginning to end the achievement of a goal. Now there is input, there's operations in the middle, and then there's the output, and that's how Porter defines his value chain. The specifics of input requires where's your facility? What is your equipment, supplies, and instruments? What is the manpower necessary to achieve your goals? And next is operations. Operations is what manufacturing does or what building constructions do, and there requires location, an analysis of flow, what the setup is, what the work is involved, and finally, the output is packaging, delivery, and service, or making sure that everything functions perfectly and the customer is satisfied. Now, when you start a job, an inspection checklist that looks at the environment, the individuals involved before they start their work. And so environmental awareness identifies risk factors and anticipates problems before they occur. And like I said, for Vince Lombardi, you must practice and you must know the competence and experience level of each individual you put at a work site. You must make sure you know that so that you don't place an individual at risk. And remember, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect, but practice till you can't get it wrong. Now, finally, execution is what you do 
not only conceptually what you think you will do. What you do must be accurate. You must demonstrate discipline, which is following the rules and steps that you've been trained and being conscious of the environment, noting that if something isn't functional, don't take a risk. Maintenance, repairs, and replacements are required, and the awareness of each individual that uses the equipment, supplies, and instruments must be there and communicated to the supervisors. Now, identification of risk factors is identifying first knowing how to properly lift, what the individual's experience is, what their education and training is, and have they been tested for competence. This is very important for whatever particular job you have in, in order to avoid injury. Is there a problem with a technique? Is there a problem with a focus? Is it a discipline problem? Or is it poor communication back and forth from individuals that may work together in order to achieve a particular job? The other risk factors that you must look at is environmental. And this could involve energy and machine hazards. It can be hazards at heights where you need safety uh, gear or floor hazards because the floor is slippery or the terrain is uneven, or there is lighting hazards where the lighting is not too clear, or noise hazards where you can't hear communication that is critical, or there's just a lot of clutter that can cause injury uh, to the individual as he traverses this particular terrain. And ergonomics implies the ability to make your environment perfect for you to be able to achieve your functions. So on the uh, left of that slide, you see perfect posture. On the right, you see poor posture and with repetitive use and poor posture over time, excessive repetition can cause microtraumatic cumulative trauma disorders like carpal tunnel, cubital tunnel, or pronator syndrome. The next concept is about management synchronization. And this is a concept where the AOLCC acronym helps you remember what it is. A stands for assembly of resources. Uh, o stands for organization through the 7S system. Uh, L is linkage of roles and that you define. C is coordination and communication. Well, each of those will be covered individually, but all five components make up what I call management synchronization, which means they work together just like a clock to give you a perfect time. There's no one gear, small or large, that is more important than the other. They all must work together in order to get the best results. Now, when we talk about management synchronization with resources, that means you must assemble the right resources that are both tangible and intangible. Tangible resources include human resources or the individuals you must uh, use for the job, the equipment, supplies, and instruments that I refer as the easy technique, the land and terrain that you're in or the facility you plan on using. The intangible resources are the knowledge that you need or the information, and it could be applied to patents, copyrights, trademarks, and even brand as well as goodwill that you've developed over the years. Now, organization is important. Once you assemble all the resources, everything must be assembled correctly and organized. And the organization system I use is called the 7S system. I borrowed it from the Toyota Way 5S system. We've added two S's. Let's review. First, when you assemble resources, you must sort to make sure you know what you have. Next, you must set it in order the way you plan on using it. Shine refers to keeping everything clean once you've used it. Standardized means that there's a certain procedure or process that is done in a certain way, and you don't change it. You follow the rules. Uh, standardization is about discipline in execution. Sustain means you continue to do all the things be before, the sorting, setting in order, and shining and standardizing continuously over time. I added surpass because surpass is continual improvement and the only way continual improvement can be done is if the individual employee communicates with the supervisor if a better way is, is found. You don't do it without communicating first because if you do, you might disrupt the entire system. And finally, succeed is a component of resilience that allows you to work really hard and never quit to, in order to achieve your goals. Now, management synchronization involves then linkage, and linkage is about first finding the right individual for the job by selecting it and placing it in the correct uh, job description. 
then you define the roles and responsibilities of the individual, and then you link the roles to the individuals who they must work with. And this essentially is about linkage of talent and roles and how I interview new candidates. I always look at not only their talents, but what are their motivations and drivers? How do they see themselves in the future? What drives their desire to work and work hard? And then I look also as if they have leadership potential. Is there initiative? Have they shown in the past that they can take a project from beginning to end without a lot of supervision? And finally, we measure the work yield over time to give us an idea the value of each individual so we can align the rewards. Now communication has a couple of components and we call it first objectification. So the objective is who's gonna do something, what are they gonna do, and when they're gonna do it. The timeline is very important. The environment which they're going to perform must be known, it must be where and how they're going to do it. And finally, the method of communication we use at my organization, ROC, is called the A4C8 D8 system. So A stands for who is your audience, number one, so you communicate according to the audience. Number two, be authentic. In other words, be totally honest with the audience. Three is be accurate, and accuracy is making sure that you know what you're talking about and that you have validated facts that you're displaying. And finally, be appropriate. Jokes that are political or they are related to sexual comments or if they're related to religion should be held back unless that is your topic. Now C8 is a two component communication system. C3, the first three C's are related to marketing and that is making sure that the information that you're giving is relevant and it, can, it must be convincing, compelling and creative. And then the rest of the communication deals with delivery of the message and the message must be clear complete, concise, consistent, and must be confirmed. And finally, the delivery method is called D8. Are you gonna do it in person uh, by mouth? Are you gonna do it by phone, by text, by video, by telegraph, by letter? However you're gonna do it, the urgency of the message is important of how it's delivered. And finally, the ultimate goal of communication besides uh, delivering a message is persuasion. When there is a disagreement, both sides kind of share their ideas in order to persuade the optimum outcome. Now, final role in management synchronization is coordination. And coordination is a dynamic execution of environmental findings that allow you to execute to get your results. And this requires selecting the right roles, the right resources, the type of work that you're going to do, the correct communication, and you must have traceability in order to then determine accountability of what is done and by when it is done. So finally, in summary, safety is everyone's responsibility. It's not just the leaders or the owner of the company, it's every employee in the company. And leadership should always lead by example. Safety and productivity is a positive sum game. You can't separate the two. You can't be overproductive and avoid safety, and you can't be too safe that you don't get anything done. Every particular event must be, uh, must be analyzed for risk and benefit. Finally, safety checklists should be created for every work and work environment in order to make sure that the hazards are eliminated and the execution is accurate. And finally, management synchronization with the AOLCC creates a safe environment. I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Please catch us on uh, our ROC uh, website and let us know if you've enjoyed it and if you want similar talks like this. Thank you.